Maria Montessori was born in the town of Chiara Valley, Italy, on August 31st, 1870. She was born to wealthy, older Italian parents. Her father, Alessandro Montessori, was a conservative military gentleman. At age 33, he was a successful government official involved in the financial management of the state-run tobacco industry. At this time in his life, he met and married Rinalde Stopani, a well-educated woman, eight years his junior from a landed family. Rinalde was a woman open to the changes of Italy, especially for women, and she appeared to have had both strength and discipline. As a couple, they were devoted to both the Catholic religion and to the ideals of liberation and union for Italy. At the age of five, Maria's family moved to Rome when her father accepted a new job and a position as an accountant first class. In a larger town like Rome, Maria would be able to go to school beyond third grade. As a school-aged child, Maria was described as self-confident, strong-willed, and a little smug. One of the stories retold by her devotees is one of seriously ill ten-year-old Maria who says to her mother, Do not worry, mother. I cannot die. I have too much to do. Because Maria had developed such a passionate interest in mathematics at age 12, she decided to pursue technical school. Technical school consisted of seven years of a modern curriculum and was not a typical path for girls. The school taught a body of facts, techniques, and skills in a very punitive atmosphere. The technical schools insisted upon regular attendance, physical immobility, and the material was learned at the same pace by passive students. Luckily for the school-aged Maria, even though many girls did not choose technical school over a classical education, there was a rage for education in New Italy. The role of women was beginning to change, and she was encouraged by her mother to break the stereotyped role. Maria completed technical school in 1890. Her father assumed Maria would want to become a teacher, but Maria refused. Although her favorite subject in school was mathematics, and many of the other technical students went on to pursue a profession in engineering, Maria now followed her interest in biological sciences, and on her own intuition, she went on to study medicine. In 1890, Maria Montessori met with the professor of clinical medicine at the University of Rome. He refused her plan to apply to medical school. Montessori later recalled that they had a pleasant talk, and when she got up to leave, she shook his hand and said to him, I know I will become a doctor. She enrolled into the University of Rome that fall. When she passed her final examinations in the spring of 1892, she was eligible, except for the fact that she was a woman, to begin the study of medicine. Even though her father was opposed to her choice to study medicine, she was unperturbed by his disapproval, and with the support of her mother, Maria persisted until she was accepted into medical school. Being the first woman in her field made her stand out initially, but after time, attention became more focused on the quality of her work. Through scholarships, Maria was able to pay most of her own way through medical school. Her fellow male students resented her at first, but her response was to accept this as a challenge to overcome through patient and persistent effort. She felt no rivalry with them and continued to dress and behave socially in a feminine way. In her struggles through medical school, Maria continued to believe she was there for some kind of mystic purpose and that she had a destiny to fulfill. She was offered a professional position as soon as she graduated in 1896. She accepted a position as assistant at San Giovanni Hospital, which was attached to the university where she would work alongside her teachers, who were now her colleagues. Two months after graduating medical school, Montessori was chosen to represent Italy at the International Women's Conference in Berlin. She lectured on the rights of working women and proposed equal pay for equal work. She said that to the women of Italy, class differences did not exist. What mattered was the struggle for rights for all women. She immediately became a feminist spokesperson in Italy. In 1897, Maria Montessori was given the responsibility to visit the Rome Asylums for the Insane. While there, she observed, 
the idiot children. Her interest in diseases of children, relieving human suffering, and commitment to social reform motivated her to read what she could about mentally defective children. Her study of these children led her to the works of Jean-Marc Gaspard de Tar and his disciple, Edouard Seguin. In one of Seguin's work, Maria found an answer she was looking for when he said that he believed these children could be helped by special methods of education. They would not be cured in hospitals. They needed to be trained in schools. At this time, Montessori began to focus on the study of education. She read all of the major works on educational theory and began to develop a theory of her own. An influential Italian anthropologist during Maria Montessori's day was Cesare Lombroso. Lombroso insisted that prisons and reformatories did not cure criminality. He believed that it was necessary to discover the causes and remedies, and the way to do this was through study of the individual. Lombroso's work was significant to Montessori because she agreed that the emphasis on solving the problem was through observation rather than theorizing. In 1898, Montessori writes an article called Social Miseries and New Scientific Discoveries for a political magazine called Roma. She referenced the article in speeches she gave on lecture tours called Modern Charity. The topic suggests that educators should shift the focus of education to the child. She suggested that new methods should be tried for the education of deficient children in Italy and that methods were being used in other places in the world with impressive results. Another speech that referenced her article that she gave on her tours was called The New Woman in which she reviews past and current theories about the inferiority of women. She approached the subject with humor, and in the end conveyed that she believed the woman of the future would have equal rights as well as equal duties. Proceeds from her lectures either benefited a local cause or went to raise funds for the League for Children with Deficiencies. During these lectures, the interested public turned out to see the beautiful scholar they had read about. Upon her return to Rome, she found herself to be a well-known public figure. By the spring of 1900, the League had opened a school in Rome to train teachers in the care and education of deficient children. Montessori was appointed director of the school, and her colleague and research associate at the psychiatric clinic, Dr. Montesano, was appointed co-director of the school. The institution was known as the Orthophrenic School. Montessori spent two years evolving and training teachers in a special method of observation and education of feeble-minded children. She studied methods used by earlier predecessors in medicine, education, and anthropology from the works of Edouard Sagan, Friedrich Froebel, and Giuseppe Serge. The materials and methods Montessori developed and used during this time were later adapted for use with normal children. Montessori believed that we should really find the way to teach the child how before making him execute a task. She believed that the way to teach a skill was not by having the child repeatedly try it, but by having him repeat an exercise that prepares him for it. She said, Pupils could then come to the real work, able to perform it without ever having directly set their hands to it before. Maria Montessori left the orthophrenic school in 1901 for personal reasons. In 1898, she had an affair and became pregnant with the co-directors, Dr. Montesano's child. She agreed to have the child in secrecy and send him away to be raised by a family in the country near Rome. If the knowledge of Maria having a baby out of wedlock ever became public, it would have shattered her career and ended all of Montessori's hopes for the future and any of the contributions she had finally come to see as the purpose of her life. It's unclear why Maria did not marry the father of her child, but they both promised each other that they would not marry anyone else. When Dr. Montesano broke that promise in 1901, Maria left the school.
Montessori withdrew to the academic life once again and enrolled herself into the University of Rome in philosophy in 1901. She took courses in pedagogy, hygiene, and experimental psychology. She continued her studies in anthropology as a way of learning more about normal children and how they were educated. In 1904, Montessori was appointed to give university courses for students in the areas of natural sciences and medicine in the pedagogic school of the University of Rome. In her courses, she gave lectures in anthropology and biology in the School of Education. These lectures were the basis of her book, Pedagogical Anthropology, published in 1910. She held this position until 1908. On January 6, 1907, the first Casa dei Bambini, the children's house, was officially opened in a housing tenement which had been renovated by a group of wealthy bankers. Prior to the initiation of the school, the children of the tenement ran wild and defaced the property while their parents were at work during the day. The building's owners agreed that something must be done to protect their investment, so they decided to hire someone to watch the children. Maria Montessori was a logical choice to ask for advice, and she agreed to oversee the project. The builders gave her a room, provisions for one supervising teacher, and 50 wild children ranging in age from two to six. She insisted on provisions for food and sanitation and relied on society women she knew to help collect funds to buy materials. With the opening of the children's house, Montessori had plans to try out some of her educational ideas on normal children. A second house was opened in another tenement in 1908. In the summer of 1909, while visiting friends at their villa in Città di Castello, Montessori began her first training course to about 100 students and found the right conditions to begin a piece of work that would contain the ideas and methods she taught. Within a month, she wrote the Montessori Method. She defined a new science of pedagogy with ideas that evolved from Itard and Seguin's work. She truly believed that the main principle of scientific pedagogy was the liberty of the student that provided the means for the child to develop his own natural tendencies. Her ideas contributed to changing the quality of life in school for young children and demonstrated a more effective kind of learning, which in turn created freer and more productive men and women. In 1911, Maria Montessori resigned from the University of Rome and from her private medical practice to devote her full-time energy to the Montessori movement. The movement became a business, and her name became a brand name that could not be used without her permission. She began receiving invitations to lecture, to give trainings all over the world, and oversee the various Montessori societies globally. When her mother passed away in 1912, she used the proceeds from her business to support her father and was reunited with her son, Mario, who was 14 at the time and was now given her last name. Maria Montessori moves to Barcelona by invitation from the city government in 1916. In Barcelona, Montessori worked to establish a model school and a teacher training institute backed by their current government that was interested in education reform. All the while, her schools in Italy had conflicts with the new fascist government and were eventually ceased. She lived in Barcelona and made Barcelona her home for 20 years until General Franco's coup of 1936. From there, she fled to England and then Amsterdam. The Netherlands became her home with over 200 practicing Montessori schools during that time. A teacher training center and a model school was set up near Amsterdam and the Association Montessori Internationale, AMI, moves its headquarters there. The sixth International Montessori Congress in Copenhagen in 1937 was themed Educate for Peace. There, Montessori delivered several lectures that were later published in her book called Education and Peace. Montessori believed that the education of children was the key to future peace. Peace education and peace curriculum are based on the teaching of Montessori and her son Mario. Avoiding war is the work of politics. Establishing peace is the work of education. Her vision and goal was the reconstruction of society 
and the establishment of world peace through education. For her efforts to help children and promote peace, she was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize in 1949, 1950, and 1951. Maria and Mario depart for India in 1939 to run a three-month teacher training at the Theosophical Society. World War II broke out in the fall of 1939. Mario was interned for a brief time by the British government, but was released for Montessori's 70th birthday. Montessori had correspondence with Gandhi, whom she had met in London in 1931. They shared the belief that to have real peace, we must begin with the children. Maria and Mario were in India for six years. They were not allowed to leave the country until World War II ended. Upon her return from India, Montessori continued to travel, give lectures, provide training, and receive honors and awards. On May 6, 1952, a few months before her 82nd birthday, Maria Montessori died peacefully in a friend's garden. She was buried in a Catholic cemetery in the town of Njordwick. Her earthly belongings and her trademark were willed to her only son, Mario. To the world, she has left her legacy in a unique educational philosophy that is dedicated to the spirit of the child. Maria Montessori said that her greatest contribution was that she observed the children and discovered their true characteristics and the true nature of their work. She believed that man must be educated to realize his greatness and to become worthy of the powers that are his.